Hello there, good evening, and thank you so much for joining us here on Joy Asayan Live. It's such a pleasure, and I'm happy to know you're right there. The past uh, elections, the general elections that was conducted earlier in the year, exposed so many discrepancies and flaws still in our electoral process. And the question today is, is it time to relax? Because it seems like political parties, CSOs, all the stakeholders around electioneering always relax. And you see everybody talking about elections only when it's a couple of days or months to elections. But what should we be doing when it comes to voter education and political awareness? awareness among especially our youths to shun violence and especially that financial inducement we keep hammering on well the, somebody in the studio who wants that conversation to keep going on he is the um just elected coordinator yali abuja he is daniel black yali network abuja coordinator it's wonderful to have you join us Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here too. Yes, I'm happy to have Mr. Black here in the studio. We'll go for a very short break right now. And when we return, we'll get to the crux of the matter. What should we be doing? Political, um, political parties, um, the media, CSOs about election and all the flaws in our elect electoral process. We'll be right back. This is still Joyous on Your Life. Like I said earlier, Daniel Black is just is still right here in the studio, Yali Network Abuja coordinator. Uh, now, I think we just go straight to the matter. First of all, Yali has been doing so much, but for those who maybe haven't heard, I know there's very few, if there's any, who hasn't heard about Yali Network. Just give us an idea as to what you do at Yali Network. All right. Thank you, Joy. It's um, like uh, once I said, it's a pleasure being here. Uh, Yali Network uh, as a whole is, uh, means Young African Leaders Initiative and um, it's an initiative of the United States of America initiated during um, the era of Barack Obama, President Barack Obama and the whole essence of the initiative was to raise um, alternative leadership options among young people. So there is a trend, there is a way leadership has gone around in Africa. And um, one of the things United States in, in their assistance, in their interventions for Africa, is to see how to build the capacities of young people to serve as um, alternative leadership options that um, when they take on leadership, when they take on positions of power, they would be able to know what to do mm. and also have the resources <coughs> to do those things. So um, Yali Network Abuja is a hub of a larger yearly network and um like you had said i am privileged to be championing the um, hub for next year and um here in yearly network abuja we prioritize youth development youth advancement and we also prioritize youth involvement in uh, socio-economic uh, activities okay so what would you say would be those uh, strategies that has to be implemented. I mean, so much work has been done. I know that uh, during the election process, you championed those, some of those um, initiatives, programs, and town hall meetings and all mm. of that, engaging young people. What would you say the biggest challenge really has been when it comes to implementing some of those strategies you lay out, especially in Africa, Nigeria, where we have the peculiarities of uh, our political landscape? Okay, thank you very much. So, um, as to what we have done, we part, we, during the last election, we were quite active. We were, um, most of our members were um, observers mm. with um, different uh, CSOs that had the observation status. We partnered with them because, we, like I told you, we have a wide network across Nigeria and Africa. So, we were able to partner with our network of mm. youths to observe elections at different locations. We, before election, we also championed um, a campaign called Yali Votes and where we uh, taught young people, taught young people, youths, and, um, on how to vote. And um, like to answer your question, and that is what excited me about the inv invitation today and the topic we're talking about because the major challenge is education, awareness. So many young people have a mindset and a very narrowed, a very limited mindset about elections. And you wouldn't really blame them because there has been one method, there has been one, one, one narrative that has been passing around for a mm -hmm. long time. And so the young people just feel that election time is their opportunity to share from the national cake. 
other than that, they do not have any other necessary information. On, you, in, you find out that in this time and age, there are young people that do not know how to properly vote with their thumbs. The, you, you, you find out that there are young people that do not know how to, do not even understand the correct sequence of elections. So you go there and you see people saying maybe uh, um, uh, an election official is like, please you guys should stand a few meters away from the ballot box. And mm -hmm. a young person is saying, no, I'm, I cannot go back. I cannot go back. You people want to do something. So he is doing that out of ignorance, but out of um, the distrust passion, the zeal well. is there. Mm -hmm. And yes, distrust of the system. So there is a lot of work that needs to be done in voter education, voter orientation. And then it's not just the uh, surface voter education. It right. has to be brought down to um, it has to be broken down to the common man's language to understand the processes. Like um, a, a common a common adage or a common saying says, when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. Exactly. So, so we need to let Nigerians, young people know the purpose of election, know the process of election. Why are we using a beavers? Why are we using this particular? Why is the ballot paper, uh, box supposed to be secret? Why is um, the place where you turn supposed to be closed? Why do we have security? Why do we stay in this uh, length of time? this length of um, distance mm -hmm. and those other things so you Nigerians need the proper information so what would you say has been I mean has been hindering this information because we have several agencies that should reel out this information it is in the interest of political parties to ensure this information is indeed out there mm. so that electorate will vote may be voting their favor what hinders this information yes. getting out there and to that grassroots that you just mentioned so like you like you rightly stated at the beginning of this interview um, now most times these interventions are done hurriedly. In fact, as you've noticed, um, political activities, political education has died down a bit. And the next time you'll start hearing things about that will be towards 2027. So you find out that these education system, these processes are hurriedly done. And most times are just done for the sake of doing. They are not done with the main intent of to, uh, really sensitizing really exactly. to really aware people. So I, I think the main hindrance is the time gap. If we have an agency that despite irrespective of the election timetable, irrespective of the election cycle, the political cycle in the country is consistent and persistent in carrying out voter education. So right now, we notice some very legal technicalities in the election system. Mm. There is nobody that has taken up the responsibility to start explaining the technicalities Qualities. of election so that in the next election cycle, we do not repeat those errors. We had young people uploading election results on their social media and expecting it to be carried Kinder out uh, to be to be Exhibiting, accepted as right. a verbal as a, as, as a legal result but those things are not accepted so we need a persistent a consistent and a systematic education process for voters so that in the next election cycle we do not repeat the same mistakes we carried out in, in the last one one of the, the the mandate of political parties is to champion this education and, uh, and awareness tours uh, is that even happening in nigeria so I, I i would not hold i would not hold brief for political parties however but as as a nigerian seeing what is happening in the landscape living in nigeria i'd say that um the activities of political parties has really doused down, especially uh, with the winding of the tribunals and all the legal cases. I think everybody has gone to relaxed mode. I'm not even seeing. Uh, I'm not even seeing so much of opposition actions right now. So I think everybody has just, and then we are just setting ourselves up to repeat the same cycle in the next election cycle. Now, every day as we speak, uh, uh, young Nigerians are turning 18, which is what makes them eligible to vote. What would you say, given what it is right mm. now, where can they get any information as to the proper way uh, uh, to vote, uh, how they can be participate in governance in the first place and the electoral process? Yes, and uh, you see, that is where CSOs and organizations come into play. Like we at Yali Network Nigeria, we are already building, we are already, this is something we've identified, and we are developing projects to see how we can continue a sustained election sensitization and education project to ensure that we take time, people have enough time to ask questions. You cannot start teaching people election processes two months to election. And then as a political party, for example, you'll be so busy trying to meet up primaries, trying to do this, trying to do this, and you may not place priority on education and sensitization. You will just give some people money to print flyers, exactly. print these, but you may not have time to answer questions. Somebody may go to your social media page and say, why is this, is this, is this? And you find out that nobody has taken time to go through those questions and answer. But if there is enough time, 
you would you you would have enough time to respond to inquiries, respond to doubts, and even engender the trust in the system. So I'd say uh, the little we are doing at um, Yali Network Abuja and Yali Network Nigeria as a whole is to try to during now when the noise is not so much. Now when the uh, tensions are not high, now when there are no um, uh, emotions are low, nobody is saying this is my person, that is my person. We are now saying let us look at what election is, let us look at what politics is, and let us understand it so that we do not take um, the errors of the past into mm. the future. Now, we've always talked about uh, technology th that can be leveraged to effectively achieve all of this. And I see, very often I hear politicians say no to technology to a certain extent, or um, they still want that human, <laughs> uh, um, humans rather, uh, still championing several aspects that the world has long moved away from. Why do you think that is? And how can we uh, engage technology more? So yes, uh, technology is a welcome development. But uh, I would also say it's a gradual process. And um, for a country as unique, as peculiar as Nigeria is, and looking at that technology is not in isolation, for every one technology that you have, there are complementary infrastructures that need to be put in place. So uh, yes, uh, we may say, because of the di general distrust Nigerians have in the system, may misunderstand the reluctance mm. or the, the reduced pace at which technological adoption is brought into our um, political system. But I would need Nigerians, and that is where the education comes into play, we need to understand that for one particular technology to be adopted and used successively, successfully in the, um, in the election cycle, especially something as sensitive as the elections, there needs to be complementary infrastructure in place. So right now, while we are waiting for 2027, three years away, what are we doing to ensure that there is proper internet uh, access? Mm. Right now, while we are waiting for 2027, what are we doing to ensure that there's proper power in place to power these technological tools? While we are waiting, what is the sensitization to make sure that the lady, the woman, the old woman in the village knows what is a biometric, knows that uh, we have a BVN, we have NIN, we have these things. How are we ensuring that prior to then, we are not rushing that old woman and bamboozling her with so much with technological exactly. terms? So, yes, technology is welcomed, but it's a gradual process. Before we talk about doing electronic voting, doing internet voting, what infrastructure have we put in place? Will we have instances where we send people with laptops and they do not have power? Will we have instances where we send people with internet-enabled uh, devices and they do not have, have internet? internet? Will we have people going to places and we do not have security architecture to protect these people? Because there are things you take into rural communities and the first thing that they think of is how they can take it off how they can sell it and how they so do we have the complementary infrastructure to support technology in our uh, political system that is the question i think we should be focusing on stripping down the whole thing called technology let's not just use it as a general term mm. stripping it down to complementary and main and main um, infrastructure and beginning to access it from that point by that time if we begin to tackle that now if for example i do not really know the mandates of, uh, I wouldn't say this is outside the mandates of INEC, mm. but I think in the next three years, while they are not so much on doing elections and printing ballot papers and all that, I think they, are, they have an education sec department, they have an infrastructure, they have an ICT department, mm -hmm. they could focus on touching, on finding, identifying points, locations, units in Nigeria that do not have access to the complementary infrastructure that will support the technology they are bringing into place. Okay. Making recommendations and ensuring that these things are put in place. Okay, Mr. Black, let's go for a short break. When we return, we'll be joined by the deputy uh, coordinator, Yali Network Abuja. He will be giving us his own perspective as to how we can better our education, voter education and political awareness. We'll be right back. This is still Joy on your live. We had to go for that short break because like I promised, we are being joined now by engineer engineer Aliu Yunusa, the deputy coordinator of Yali Nigeria. 
uh, Yali Network Abuja. I don't know how I got that wrong. I got it so well when I was talking to you earlier. <laughs> In the studio is still Daniel Black, uh, the Yali Network Abuja coordinator. But thank you, gentlemen, for coming. And thank you for coming. As thank well. you very much for having us. Yes, like I said uh, earlier, we have been in, in, uh, discussing improving political education amongst young Nigerians. And I would like you to just get into the conversation straight on. And uh, we had taken the conversation and gone past what political parties could do. But in your, in your assessment of the just concluded elections, what would you say the young people need more than anything? Okay. Uh, thank you very much once again for having us. Uh, in terms of political education, uh, it's very interesting to me myself that young people are awakening their consciousness in trying to involve in our national politics. But um, the, what I observe personally is that uh, we, we need enlightenment and sensitization. Uh, we have to understand every uh, facet of our uh, country governance, like um, if, if you watch critically during the election, all, everybody centered their attention on national politics, national politics, national politics. And this is due to lack, lack of enlightenment and how the governance system really op uh, operates. Mm. So what I uh, enjoined the young people to do or uh, young uh, uh, youth advocacy organizations to do is to educate and enlighten young people on the real governance and w w who's supposed to do what mm. and who are responsible to, for, for uh, policies, implementation and every other uh, and, uh, integration among governors. That's what I believe. And what do you think is the danger? I mean, I should take this question to you, Black, when young people do not understand the policies and all the intricacies of governance, what is the biggest danger to the country? Abuse. Like I said, in the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. So you see young people begin with their passion, with their energy, with their creativity. They begin to participate in a process and inevitably abuse that process because they do not understand the process. Like I give you an example. So many young people who were passionate and wanted their votes to count. Rather than using the legal and the um, uh, and the accepted and approved processes decided to go on social media to rant. They preferred to snap election results and posts and felt that that is a legally accepted result. And you find out that they did that with so much passion and so much belief. Mm. And when those things were not uh, accepted, when they did it. not count, when it did not matter, they were now we were not talking of the back end. We were not talking of INEX server and all those things. Young people so felt so bad, and in fact, so many of them lost faith in the system, and that is largely because they didn't have that information. They don't have the information. Place. They felt, they put in their whole energy, some had to buy data, some had to charge their phones. They were really ready to participate. But unfortunately, 80 to 70% of the young people participated in the wrong way. Mm. So if we had young people following the right processes, following the right indices to participate in the election, we would have had a different outcome in, in, in the acceptability of whatever results came, came out. out right. You notice that there was a, uh, you would say young people generally uh, uh, felt, felt that did not want to accept the result that came out. Mm. And there were myriads of uh, uh, legal battles and all that. So you, uh, I, I believe that if there was information and they had rightfully followed the process, they would have had a cause to believe in the results. Okay. Uh, you know, sir, let's go to what social media did prior to the elections, during the elections and afterwards. Would you say social media made or mar the process of our electoral uh, elections, rather? Oh, okay, uh, once more again, thank you very much. Uh, contribution of social media now is, uh, is clearing to every politician in the country, uh, especially the last election that we just uh, conducted. So uh, social media has a vital role to play in, in our election these days. Just, just like my coordinator just said, uh, right information will uh, enhance the use of social media. Like uh, issue of emotion will not come into play when you have adequate knowledge and information of how the processes are, are being uh, conducted. Mm -hmm. So social media uh, plays a positive role 
in projecting candidates uh, canvassing for votes uh, uh, all, in all those uh, lines. And it almost mar the process in terms of emotion, like my coordinator rightly said. Mm. When you don't know how a, a process is being run, you, you, you use your own uh, sentiment. A, a sentiment and intuition to not what it is, what you think that it, it ought be to be. Right. So, but when it doesn't go that way, it, your emotion will come in and you will be like uh, agitating to mar the process. So I believe that with the proper enlightenment education in our political system and structure, the positive opportunity in social media towards electing uh, governance will uh, be corrected. Thank you. And you, what do you think? So, we yeah, I, I just want to throw that line because uh, uh, social media, yes, has massive positive um, tendencies and benefits, right? But like he said, in fact, largely due to misinformation, we had the negatives coming out because we had um, fake news, so much fake news exactly. coming from the social media, and then it was tearing up emotions, things that we need to look at logically, things that we need to look at using the constitution. We were, we were keeping the constitution aside and wanting to ensure that uh, we do things our own way. You, you do not even understand how movement of election material should be. And the moment you see a vehicle coming and you're already suspecting, maybe because you probably know the driver, you do not know that he's actually a paid driver, a paid, um, how do they call them, vendor mm -hmm. of the of INEC. So because you know this driver and he's a driver in your community, you already feel that the, you say, you oh guy, you cannot carry this thing. Yeah. You've not understood the process that this person actually was screened and is a vendor of INEC. So social media has great massive positive uh, tendencies. But when we educate, when we sensitize, when our people begin to look at things way beyond their emotions, their sentiments, I think we will begin to reap the benefits of um, positive social media um, fruits. Okay. Well, one of the very concerning uh, aspect of the just concluded elections is the massive, or this is in the words of uh, some observers, massive voter inducement that happened. Uh, that's a financial inducement. Some were very glaring. We saw pictures and videos of it even being do hap happening. It was not as as it was not as copped uh, uh, by the law enforcement agencies as it, it should have been. In fact, there were accusations that some law enforcement agencies even enhanced it. It helped it helped that process. What would you say the the kind of voter education? necessary so that we do not see this financial inducement go about bearing in mind uh the economic economic challenges nigerians are facing at the moment okay uh thank you very much in terms of uh, election inducement uh it's a process uh, it, uh, at if you compare what we have now what we have before so people are more informed now in decision making than before uh a lot of people will always like to have their way with what uh, they have. Like if you look at even the policies that came uh, uh, towards uh, the election, the uh, federal government was trying to curb the issue of industry. But at the end of the day, it still happens. Mm. So I believe that if you, if you are informed and educated and knows that collecting, is it 10,000 naira? Sometimes it's way less than uh, that. Uh, uh, collecting 10,000 naira to vote against uh, competence and capacity will uh, befall you for the next, let's say, eight years. Because in our country, once you enter there, you are aside the system. That's it will be easy <laughs> to come back again. So when we have enough informed mind, right. uh, educated individuals that knows that uh, the uh, governance or societal building it's not about me and you speaking the same language. It's about competence, capacity, and ability to deliver. Mm. You will also not collect 10,000 to vote against that. And also, uh, there are a lot of uh, campaign against inducement uh, during election. I saw some mathematics where they will uh, bring out a figure, 10,000 era divided by four oh, years, yes. divided a, a by daily, a, a daily So at the end of the day, when you look at that figure, uh it it, it, it means uh, nothing and again uh, uh, the, the federal government on their own part they are trying in, in, in the issue of uh, unemployment or, or poverty alienation i believe when we have higher percentage mm. of our citizens 
informed it because sometimes, uh, sorry to say, people make decisions, short-term decisions because of what they have passed through. So but when we have uh, policies and programs that can at least elevate some people or pull a, a little percentage out of um, poverty line, inform them, educate their mind, we will be able to curb this uh, uh, election. Into, even if not curb, at least it will yeah, be good be, uh, yeah, to be arrested uh, minimum. I think that is my own view concerning yeah. issue of reducing. I'll take this question to Black. Yes, uh, you see, I, I like the last part he said, um, inform their minds. And you, that's, I, I'll just take you back to what Yali Network in does, is trying to do capacity development for young people. Because we partnered with an organization in the la before the last election, and we did something we call now Who Votes Go Chop. We let you know that you have to go out. It's those that ha can vote, vote that decide buy. that would benefit, they that will reap the benefits of uh, their decisions. And so you, you, uh, Nigerians need to understand that the short-term funds, and when we started this interview, I told you that there's that general notion of people that it is during election that they have opportunities to to share from the national cake mm -hmm. and uh, we need to let them uh, we need to let people begin to know that the national cake is an all year round all day round event so you do not you should not target to take it only once in four years if you position yourself through capacity development through value addition to yourself you will be able to partake from the national cake all the years of governance exactly. and then you also decide you also participate in ensuring that competence uh, takes over the place. You will participate in the national cake all year round because by the time people who know what to do, people who have the interest of the masses, people who have the interest of Nigeria, mm. who are patriotic at heart, take over leadership positions, they will begin to put into place policies and projects that will make sure that the masses continually and consistently benefit from the government. So um, it's it's been a bane of our inducement, has been a bane of um, our political system, but it's a, a continued education and a continued empowerment by different organizations like what Yali Network is doing, encouraging young people to begin to be self-dependent, to begin to be to begin to add value to what they give to, to themselves and what they can give to the economy. In fact, if you have what to lose, if you have a business right. that is either into importation or into production, you would sit down and, criti and critically analyze the people coming into power. Mm. How, what are this person's antecedents as it comes to my business? Exactly. And then someone will offer you 10,000 and you look at the business you've built for over three years and four years and you'll find out that this 10,000 has nothing to do with the losses your business will get if an incompetent person goes into power. So we need to intensify on developing the young people to be economically independent. And that would really, really reduce, like he said, may not totally cop, mm -hmm. but reduce the um, issue of uh, voter in inducement. Okay, so Mr. Yunusa, we, uh, we had a lot of people disillusioned after the general elections, mostly because they didn't even know how to even, um, what to expect, what, they, what, is, what was expected of them. However, if you have to uh, envisage the coming elections, uh, in 2027, there are off-season elections also coming uh, before that time. Uh, would you say that we would have people as as excited to go into elections like we had in the past in general elections? Okay, uh, you are talking of more voters uh, turn turnout. Voter turnout, mm. voter participation, sure. and all that. I believe there are a lot of people who participate, especially with the confidence that. Um, INEC has built on in people. The election is ongoing. If you election is ongoing, you can actually follow the process and uh, to some certain extent and view what is coming in from every polio unit. And also, uh, the percentage of voters' participation is increasing. It like, is increasing. Yes, it's increasing. Like mm. what is uh, my state just conducted uh, governorship election? Kogi state. Kogi state. Right. So the, the turnout wa wa was massive compared to uh, the previous election. So that is, that is a development. And just like uh, my coordinator said, there are so many uh, organizations, especially even our um, as a organization, which is Yali, who is advocating more people because the percentage of voters collection and the percentage of people that actually voted. If not, I, I, let me not speak out of ignorance. I know the, the people that doesn't vote, the percentage is higher than those that are voting. Mm. So that means there are still more people 
that either one way or the other they, they haven't still believe in the system and if uh the the mind of people uh, reflect on the outcome of an election more people will have the confidence to come out to vote it's all it's all our normal election if my brother is, is contesting at the end of the day you know that his outcome reflect the interest of the people so other in the next election more people will have the confidence mm -hmm. to uh, to participate so to my own assessment i believe subsequent elections will have m more turnout than what we have in previous elections, especially the youths because what just happened in the previous election is just like a flash to the el more election that will come i believe that the next election 2027 the outcome will be decided by by the youth and the youth i believe will, will participate more than this that this one done. uh they have learned they have they now they have experience uh, where most of the things they got wrong uh, if you have open mind to learn you you, ha you know what went wrong and i believe that they, they will prepare more and come back in 2027. Do you share in this optimism? Because as a journalist, I remember talking to several young people at the time and they say, who election help? Mm -hmm. Some of them hadn't even gone to recollect their uh, mm, PVCs. PVCs. The, those who collected didn't even vote. If you see the statistics of, of uh, those who collected mm. the PVCs and those who eventually vote, voted, I mean, it was, uh, the margin is really high. So yeah. it seems very optimistic. Uh, do you, uh, yeah. are you, so, do you share so in that optimism? My deputy coordinator is a very optimistic person <laughs> and, okay. I, and I love him for that. Uh, so I, I, I do not entirely share in that optimism. But what I'd love to say is that um, there's still time. We still have time to ensure that in the next election, there is massive voter turnout. What do we use this time for? Time to engender trust in the system. Time to engender understanding of the system. So many young people have used sentiments and have sworn never to participate. Exactly. They've been cheated. They've been this. They've been that. But the good thing is that they actually came out. They participated. Now, it is easier to actually educate those people that came out. You, say, you see that time you stood in the line. This is what you should have done. Mm -hmm. It's easier to educate those people than to educate people that have not even participated at all. So, like I said, to share my coordinate, uh, deputy coordinator's sentiments, there's a possibility that we could have a higher turnout if we maximize, if we begin to utilize the timing we have. What we have now, unusually, is a high number of politically experienced but not educated youths. So they, f they went out to vote. In fact, some of them put on their social media. Some of them talked about it. Mm -hmm. They were so enthusiastic. So they have a, some form of experience right. in the political. So right now, we need to work on that experience and then let them know that, yes, while well, this you were doing, you were right here, you were wrong here, you were right here, you were wrong here. Next time, do it this way. I believe the enthusiasm will get higher. I believe we will see much more results. But if we just wait and do things a regular way, by 2026, towards the ending of 2026, we begin to run around, uh, give grants, do projects and all that, we probably may not see what we saw in the last election negatively. Right. Now let's go to CSOs and all the stakeholders and the engagement with government and the stakeholders in charge of electioneering. What is your, what, what would you say your perception of the re reception you get is like in, in engaging for changes? I remember when um, after the elections we had several reports. Yali, uh, Yali Network had, had um, uh, a report as well. Um, uh, bringing chronicling what happened and, yes. and suggest, suggesting as well. There were several recommendations. recommendations. Yeah, there were several recommendations that were given. So what do you think this recommendation often end up with? What, what, what's, what's the, do the government even listen? <laughs> do we see an INEC that's listening. Gentlemen, I'm surprised. I'm not sure why you're <laughs> laughing here. Do, do we get that, that um, INEC that is listening? Let my coordinator take this I one. I would rather <laughs> you do because you are refusing to take it. I would rather let, you do. Let, let my coordinator uh, so take, take, take it first. Okay. So, um, without sounding too negative, I think this time has actually listened. But the question is, have they done what they listened to? So there are two. Uh, 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 in fact, not, not to sound, not to be sounding too technical. So there's. I want to break it down that there's a difference between listening to you and, and actually doing what you said. Yeah 
or actually implementing the, the corrections you gave. Right. And um, I would also want to be very optimistic and give them time. Because, yeah, if you notice, uh, there's, there's some, I, I would say, in my personal perspective, that there's some improvement in these off-season elections that have taken place. Mm. And um, I do not know if they'll be able to sustain it when it comes to the national, the big-time elections. Yeah, for the states, right. independently, they've shown some degree of improvement. They've shown some, they've factored in some uh, recommendations that were made by different CSOs. Mm -hmm. Yardley Network did some recommendations. Yaga Africa did re recommendations. And a whole lot of, even international observers did recommendations. And we've noticed some of those um, things being implemented. But the question is, will they be able, have, had, had, have they... Have they strategically positioned or have they implemented it in a way that they can scale it to, to a national uh, mm. level? So, back to your question. Yes, they have listened. That may be shocking, but we are waiting to see if they will do what they listened to. How do you know? I mean, the indices uh, or the KPIs to, to, to tell is... They're coming out to say so that we recognize that these were the flaws during elections and we hope to do so, this. So, so understanding, understanding governance, understanding bureaucratic processes, I may not expect that. Swift um, response? No, no, not swift. I may not expect that public uh, acceptance. acceptance. Mm. I, 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 in fact, I don't deem it necessary. I would rather want to see it in the implementation of these things. So like you said, recommendations. So after the elections, we gave recommendations. So elections are finished. Recommendations have come. So I think it's only fair we give them time to see. So yes, they collected. They gave, there were channels via emails, via stakeholder engagement, via di their, their, their um, information department. Mm. They received recommendations. In fact, they all all organizations that did uh, observation that had observer status, both local and international, were mandated to give reports within um, two weeks after, after each election. election right. So yes, those reports were given. In fact, they threatened that if you do not give this report, you may not get the observer status next time. So so many organizations responded, and they received them. Right. So. It, it, it is only fair to them to listen if they will implement what they have received. So, yes, uh, to answer your question directly, yes, they listened. They listened. Mm. Okay. <laughs> like you said, uh, there are bureaucratic uh, um, stages, processes. processes. Mm. But let's, let's take it now to something else, the violence during elections and the fact that you are not seeing, or, I, I mean, INEC came up some time ago to talk about uh, those who, commi who they had handed to law enforcement agents who perpetrated violence during uh, elections. But what, 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 what is there in ensuring that these young, these people who perpetrated violence are indeed um, prosecuted? Uh, is, is it something that Yali also does just to, so that they can ensure uh, that young people are dissuaded from ever, uh, you know, uh, joining uh, such social vices? Oh, okay. Uh, is, is something Yali does? Uh, as we said earlier, yearly uh, participation in election process is education and, and enlightenment. Mm. Just like now, I am informed that election is not by uh, violence. Right. S so I am tutored through the organization how election mm. should be. Mm. So for that, my mind has been prepared to know that I don't need to take arm in order to make you the president. So Yali has actually, in fact, Yali has done a lot in terms of enlightenment and educating the youth, mm. shown election violence, embrace uh, education, know the process. So I say that Yali, I, I would confidently say that Yali has actually done a lot in, uh, in that. As we said, uh, we still need more campaign. Uh, we need more souls to to be baptized. Uh, one, uh, one <laughs> into you win, you win yes, souls. You win souls, so so that ev we will all be informed that when election is, in fact, you going with the mindset of violence can even disrupt the uh, the process and even tilt the image of your own uh, candidate. So mm. the the work is already there. Is for we to uh, improve on it and spread the the gospel to uh, so you do not believe prosecution is another form of deterrence oh so are you pressuring are you pressuring uh, the law enforcement to ensure that those who are were culpable are indeed prosecuted uh, coordinator 
Yeah, so <laughs> basically, basically. Well, let me, you still have to in your, let, let, in your yeah, court. Yeah, yeah. So you see, these are we, we focus more on the education sensitization and awareness of young people. Now, in terms of um, prosecuting, the law enforcement, the INEC has done their part. They uh, accosted and um, handed over to the law enforcement agents. And um, yes, I know that CSOs play a role, but that has not been our prime focus right now because we believe that um, they have, their, they, they, they know what to do. They are then the right places. But I, I, if CSOs that are focused on legal activities, I, I would use this opportunity to call on them mm. because monitoring and tracking will help put the, C the um, security agencies on their toes to ensure that they do the things the right way. People, because you hear information, there were there were video clips of people that um, ran away with ballot boxes, exactly. even in the last election, exactly. and some of them were said to be arrested. Exactly. We do not know how far there has been no follow-up. Mm. Because apart from just ensuring that these people have been... Um, have been uh, yeah, prosecuted. Yeah, yeah. Like you said, it will serve as a deterrent. Someone will sit down and say, Oh, more if I do this thing, then go catch me. And when they catch me, nobody will come and bail me. I'll actually go to jail. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I think um, CSOs need to also look into that in terms of monitoring and tracking prosecution of oh, election right, offenders. Right. So, yes, it's, it's, it's something that CSOs should look into. And um, for those that have their focus around legal activities, justice, uh, and all that, I think it's, it's a project that they could look into 2024, begin to identify those people that were publicly um, publicly uh, apprehended. paraded, yeah, apprehended. And apprehended. Paraded, yeah. They should look into it, and then there should be a follow-up, and then they should serve as information breach for the uh, populace. Okay, so what can we, gentlemen, it's getting interesting. Mm. And unfortunately, we are getting to the end of the program as well. But what can we start doing? I mean, we just finished the general elections. Um, a lot of uh, court uh, litigations are now piping down. Verdicts have been given. We have some still coming up. Right now, what would you suggest uh, political parties to be doing? Elections are, the next uh, round of elections are in three three um, years, three years plus. Hmm. So what would you expect CSO's government, the, the electoral umpire to be doing so that some of those flaws we witnessed during the past general elections will not witness them longer? Oh, okay. If I will say one thing that we should start doing, we should start mm -hmm. planning now, rather than waiting for uh, five months or six months to election. the election. So by, if we start planning now, we are in um, 2023 by next year we are 2024 and the next election is here with us 2027 so every in every election we identify gaps it's, it's form of like a research you identify gaps recommendations were given so let's start now they have participated they have seen the gaps they have witnessed the areas we perform very well they have also um, heard or seen the recommendation given by various uh, groups. Let us start planning now. By If we start planning now, we will have enough time to strategically put everything in place and have it all in the election, rather than waiting for maybe 2025, 2026, mm -hmm. before we will start all over again. And again, another thing that normally comes like it makes headline where CSOs will say that um, they, they, they don't have adequate number of personnel to mm -hmm. actually implement the uh, guidelines or create that presence how many personnel needed to plan make to make things uh, let's plan it now mm. so that we will not rush everything and we will still go back to the same this, old problems this, the same. So okay. I told my own uh, listen, suggestion. If my suggestion, if I have the power to uh, to preside over it, I believe that it, the time for the next election to be uh, free, fair, and uh, credible, credible mm -hmm. should start now. Okay. So what would you say? I know that some people had commended the the the, uh, uh, the past these staggered elections, these uh, off-season elections. The the process of it mm. uh, uh, would you say that moving forward but well, that's something the government should consider stagger elections so that INEC and the uh, security agencies and law enforcement will not be so overwhelmed and what do we start doing all of us the media the political parties stakeholders umpire okay so I think um, like we had um, identified in at the beginning of this interview awareness and sensitization is key and like I said, that, in, that interested me when I was invited for this interview. 
we need to break down electoral guidelines and start talking about them. Okay. In the next election, we should not have so much of technicalities because the people know what will be accepted and what will not be accepted. INEC, I believe, is having their plans. In fact, by next year, they, are, they, they should be featured in the budget, right? That is to show that they are having their plans. CSOs, on the other part, should begin to integrate political intervention or political awareness and advocacy projects in their, pro in their um, yearly plans. They should not wait for 2026 to begin to put that up. So I believe that if all the different parties, if now if people that are intending to monitor election, they should begin now to develop their monitoring system in line with the electoral guidelines. Monitoring systems that will be acceptable and that will be attainable as evidence and as um, justifiable um, proofs in wherever it is uh, requested for. So everybody, like my deputy coordinator has said, should start planning now. And it, when, when we say start planning now, not just INEC, every player in the system. If we now have, in fact, uh, back in second primary school, we used to have social <coughs> studies. Yes. If we bring in a topic in social studies about election, about governance, I think that will play a long role that in the next five, six, eight years, when that child that is in um, primary school that learns about governance all through his primary school gets to a, a voting age, he, these things will not sound, sound like, sound like um, rocket science to him. Mm -hmm. He'll understand the process and he immediately integrate into it. So I think everybody needs to begin to implement. We do not need to wait until 2026. So I, 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 that's, that's where I think... Well, can I add happen. one more quick one thing quickly? Okay, quickly. In terms of planning, uh, the, those that implement our election guidelines uh, are youth core members that have uh, connection with the community who listen. I believe that, let this be a call from Yali, if that, pro, that uh, training I now conduct like one month, two months to election for youth core members, if it can be a course, final year uh, courses for uh, university students how to conduct election let them understand how like as a final year student you must go through that through uh, so, that so that now you do in, in school already mm. the how to conduct election there is a course on election the, uh, maybe it might be either compulsory or producer that those that took that course in during nys will be the, those that will participate in electioneering process because on that problem that cause emotion during the election are uh, uh, lack of um, let, me, let me let me not use uh, some words let me say lack of information by those that are mm. interfacing so if uh, let it be the yearly said government should look for a ways to uh, infuse it uh, uh, is it presiding officer rules for the whole election, uh, process, election process, process because process. besides sorry besides just the presiding officer rules if nigerians understand the role in as much as you are the presiding officer i understand the role i can conveniently and correctly correct you. you yes if all of us understand the role you will be very careful not to do anything wrong otherwise so yes aside 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 preparing them to be uh, uh, presiding Senate officers, officers yeah. Everybody, imagine yeah. that 90% of the people in the polling unit are Understand integrally are. aware of the process. I think it will make our works a whole lot easier. Gentlemen, I think having said that, we have, we have really, really, you know, addressed this issue of uh, voter uh, education uh, among young people and improving our political education and awareness as well. Thank you, gentlemen, for being part of the program. We've been discussing with Daniel Black, with Tubom Daniel Black. Uh, he's Yali Network Abuja coordinator. We also have uh, engineer Liu Yunusa, deputy coordinator. Yali. Engineer doctor. Engineer do No, I'm not allowed to do that. <laughs> engineer. Mm -hmm. Engineer, take one. <laughs> <laughs> engineer Liu Yunusa. Thank you so much for being part of the program. He's the deputy coordinator, Yali Network Abuja. When he lives here, he can be referred by you as engineer doctor i'm not going to do that here <laughs> but this is where we draw the curtains on joy as in life it's been a very interesting one we'll leave now uh, so that you can enjoy your uh, weekend or rather your your evening i apologize i'm still in the weekend <laughs> weekend groove so that you can en enjoy your evening this is where we round it up have a wonderful wonderful evening until tomorrow where you keep a date with us and we'll be back